Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. Um, I'm having one. I'm having to film it on my phone because my camera has decided it doesn't want to work, and it won't save any videos to my memory card, which is brill. Um, and as you can see, I've already got my makeup on. Um, I won't be doing makeup in this video. This video is more about a chat um, about my current journey uh, with trying to conceive and fertility there's going to be a lot of erming and stuttering because i'm really i'm really nervous i've been putting off doing this video for so long and i think it's time that i talk to everyone about what's been going on and what is going to be coming up i am really nervous I'm going to jump straight into it and I'm just going to say that this video is going to be raw, it's going to be real and it's going to be TMI. So if you don't want to watch, that's fine. I understand. And if you don't want to hear about, you know, periods and fertility issues and you just generally don't want to know that about me, then that's okay. I understand. But for the people out there that do want to hear about my story and my journey and even if you can't relate, just, you know, just think about what I'm saying. Um, it will probably help. Well, I'm hoping it'll help a lot of people. Okay, no more rambling. So it started back in February last year. So February 2020, I came off of my contraceptive pill. I was on the pill called microgynin and i was on that since i was about 15 so that's eight years seven or eight years um it's a long time to be on you know birth control tablets but i was on that since i was 15 and in february i came off it so the month and the month after that so march and april after i came off the pill I didn't have any periods, which I just thought was normal. You know, I thought that was the normal thing about coming off your pill. It's just your body like, getting back to its normal self. Um, and that shouldn't be concerned about it at all. You know, I I felt fine. So I didn't think there was any issue to, to it, really. Until it was the following two months after that. So we're coming up to July. <laughs> July 2020 it'd been four months since I'd had a period and I had been having cramps like abdominal pains like like I was having period pains but there was no period uh, no period came from it and I was having them like all the time so I began to think right it's been four months I've done a pregnancy test I'm not pregnant um there's no period, but I'm having the pain. Maybe I should ring the doctors. So I phoned my GP and they booked me in for an ultrasound scan um, two weeks from that day. So I was like, right, okay, whatever. Like, I just want to know what's going on, really. So I went for my ultrasound scan uh, two weeks later and they said that everything looked fine. You know, everything looked great. There was nothing, no, nothing that wasn't how it should be. Um... And she didn't seem concerned so i was like okay that's fine like that's reassuring that you know there's nothing visually wrong with my insides in my my uterus or whatever it is <laughs> uterus i think it is <laughs> so i was like okay that's great but what is going on like why have i still not had a period what what could be going on so I was referred back to my GP and they said I should I should probably get in contact with a gynecologist so they put me through to a gynecologist at a hospital and I had appointments with him for at least six months or so like I was seeing him quite a lot like I was having like phone consultations and I would occasionally have to go in but obviously because of Covid um, I couldn't go in an awful lot and speak to him and he wanted me to go and have blood tests. So I literally had about 10, maybe 10, 10 different blood tests for all different sort of things. Cause they wanted to make sure 
that you know I didn't have like an underactive thyroid or anything like that and you could obviously see on my records that I'd had an ultrasound scan and everything looked fine so they wanted to see if it was something that they couldn't see that was causing the issues so he did loads of different blood tests and you know the first few came back fine I don't I have like the sheets like the blood test results but I don't understand what they mean so I wasn't really that concerned unless he was concerned then I wasn't concerned um but the last few blood tests he wanted me to come back and have it done whilst I was on my period so like between day two and four of my period because apparently like some of your hormone levels like change during like you're having your period and throughout your monthly cycle it's I was like okay whatever so I, I literally had to like ring last minute like okay I've come on like I need to come for a blood test now but obviously because Covid it was just a whole fiasco but I managed to get it done and the blood test that I went for whilst I was on my period showed up something that wasn't quite right Um, so he wanted me to go back again the month later when I was having my period because at this point they'd started they'd started again um I forgot to mention that I had been getting my period um literally just after the ultrasound appointment so it was yeah it was like start of August I'm just trying to think back to the days but it was like, like the start of August I got my period again like just as I'd been to the hospital because I hadn't had one in four months, it came. Shocker. Um, so it wasn't like awfully concerned, but he did say that I had to have another blood test because something flagged up on that one and he needed to redo it to make sure it wasn't just like a glitch sort of thing. Like and it, it was the actual thing. So long story short, in I think it was October time, he phoned me with my results from the blood test like the last blood test that he had done and he was talking about a hormone called fsh which is the follicle stimulating hormone and basically for the purse for like the average like range like it should be for someone my age like i'm a 23 years old like for someone my age it should be around 10 like this level should be around 10 um and mine was at a three so mine was really really low um i didn't obviously i didn't know what this meant like what does a low fsh level mean um so i was just a bit like is it anything to be concerned about and he said yeah potentially um so he wanted another blood test doing when i wasn't on my period to see whether you know, it was just whilst I was bleeding that it was low or whether it was low constantly. So a couple of weeks after that, I had to go for another blood test and the results came back for that one and my res my levels were at a one. So they had dropped again. This was literally in the space of two weeks, they dropped again. So at this point I was like, right, so three was low, one is very very low what does this mean and basically the fsh the follicle stimulating hormone is basically what stimulates your ovaries into um producing or releasing eggs this is what i believe i'm not a medical expert like this is just what i am understanding of what's going on with me so <clears throat> he basically said it could potentially be a diminished ovarian reserve which I did the wrong thing and I googled it and you should never google anything like that because it just <laughs> ruined your life. I cried so so hard um, when I googled it but basically it means that I don't have many eggs left in my ovaries because all women are born with a set amount of eggs like that is what they're going to have for life when they run out they run out. Um, there could be millions but obviously when you ovulate you can ovulate more than one or you know some of them aren't good or every, every single time you have a period like that's an egg gone um i don't know if i was being a bit dramatic when i said we have millions but we have quite a few i know we do 
um, and he said that potentially mine are either running out like I don't like I don't know how many I've got left or the quality of them isn't great so basically I was running out of time really to have children and that broke me it was completely soul destroying to hear um and he knew that I really 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 wanted to start a family with my partner um we've been trying to I'd say we've been trying to conceive but on and off for about a year at that point and I just I lost it like I completely lost it so he after finding that out he was asking me more about the contraceptive pill and he was trying to explain to me like why this happens or what could cause it and obviously one being smoking smoking reduces you know your your chances of fertile it basically destroys your eggs um so smoking is not good which i wish i'd have known sooner and another big part of it was the contraceptive pill that i was taking for so long so basically he said to me that um basically the contraceptive pill puts your ovaries to sleep um it puts your ovaries to sleep and sometimes they don't wake up again so that is why i potentially didn't have a period for so long after finishing the contraceptive pill because my ovaries were still asleep and he says it can normally take a few months for them you know to get back to normal normal um but sometimes they don't and then they never fully wake up like so you could have a period but you might you know the egg that you that that could have been put to good use um could probably have been like a dead egg sort of thing so basically he said I don't know how long you've got left to have children. We don't know how many eggs you have. We don't know what the quality of your eggs are, but I'm gonna refer you to a fertility clinic, an IVF clinic, a fertility clinic. And uh, I think literally everything he said after that point, I just I went in one ear and out the other. I just could not function. I broke down. I've always wanted a family. Anybody that knows me will know that that is all I've ever wanted. And to hear that your your levels are, are, are ridiculously low. The chances of you like being able to conceive naturally are slim. Broke, it broke my heart. Like it was soul destroying. Um, so this is why I'm kind of sharing my journey is because... I researched the contraceptive pill after he told me this because I was fuming. I was fuming that nobody had ever told me that, you know, if you're on a pill for so long, um, you know, you might leave you infertile. Nobody ever told me that until I researched it. And it was online, you know, if sometimes if you take the pill for too long, you know, it can basically paralyze your ovaries. And I was fuming. I was absolutely fuming because nobody had ever told me that. Like, if I'd have known that, I would never have been on the pill for so long. I would have just let my body do its thing and or found another method of contraceptives, one that didn't basically paralyze my ovaries. So going forward with this, he said that up until my appointment date with the fertility clinic that I should try and just conceive naturally like keep trying and trying and trying you know track your ovulation you know take supplements take vitamins do everything you possibly can to help yourself don't stress about it but obviously how can you not stress about it like you've just been told you might not be able to have children you've you've got to try and have children it's a lot of pressure it's a lot of pressure to put on yourself it's a lot of pressure on the relationship that you're in um i mean i didn't want necessarily to have children straight away i expected it to take years to even be able to start a family 
and now for someone to put a time scale on that and say you need to do this quick otherwise it's not going to happen it it just literally blew everything like to shit to be honest with you like i've been so I wouldn't even say depressed because I'm not depressed because I know that those options and I know those people out there who are in a lot worse positions. Um, but it makes me feel anxious because what if, what if this doesn't happen? What if I can't do this? What if, you know, what if there's something even worse? What if I don't have any eggs to, you know, preserve for the future or... You know, it's just it's just a constant battle with myself about what ifs, what if this, what if that. And <clears throat> it's draining. It's really, really draining. So, I'm sharing this because I'm about to start my journey um, at, the fertility, uh, at the fertility clinic. Um, I'm about to start my journey. I have my first appointment on... Monday, so that's two days. I had my first appointment in two days' time, and I'm trying my hardest to stay positive. Like I'm literally just telling myself, you know, you've got this. You know, there's there's, there's so many options, and even though deep down it literally infuriates me that there's people out there who, you know, are blessed enough to be able to have children, and the things you see over the news and you know people it you know what i mean it knocks me sick i don't even want to think about it but it knocks me sick um that such a blessing is violated like that so i have my first appointment on monday me and my partner are going and we're going to be discussing like what what options there are um so i've seen a few videos on youtube because that's my main go-to i like to hear people with you know similar stories similar experiences and things that have worked for them you know it's really reassuring seeing you know all these women that you know like finally managing to conceive like after years of being infertile and successful fertility treatments like you know it really it really does you know give me hope that i'm not broken <laughs> and i will be able to have children at some point in the future hopefully so on monday i'm presuming the first appointment is just going to be you know uh, exams you know they're going to probably going to like, do some more tests and do some scans and probably have a, a rummage around inside me and see what's going on um and then potentially discuss future options i know there's some like hormonal fertility drugs that you can take um, I think one of them is called Clomid. Um, I've seen a lot of people, you know, with successful pregnancy stories taking Clomid, which I think just basically kicks your ovaries into doing something, like releasing decent eggs. If that is available for me, it literally all depends on what what I have or what I don't have. Um, I'm trying to manifest good things. I mean, you know, I'm just trying to say like, you know, I've got this, like I, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this even though it's heartbreaking you know knowing you've been trying and trying and trying and the one thing like i say a one thing a woman is supposed to do is not but the one thing that a woman is naturally supposed to do is be able to have children and reproduce and i cannot do that on my own like i can't have children on my own evidently so at this point getting help is my only option it's it's gonna be tough but i'm so excited like at the same time i don't know if i've said this but it's so bittersweet like the the thought of it actually happening is it's it's so overwhelming like the thought of you know it actually working and them telling me you know you know you've got you know viable eggs and this is gonna this is gonna work and i mean there's no guarantee it's gonna work but as long as there's something there there is a chance there is a chance that it will work um 
it's all just it's all just such an emo emotional roller coaster like I, I feel like after monday i'll be able to do a video and talk to you all about what what are the steps going forward so this video i think was just the start of a trying to conceive um journey and you know a fertility journey um I didn't really know how I was going to film this or what I was going to say. Uh, if I was even going to be able to do it without becoming an emotional wreck and having a breakdown. But as of Monday, so in two days time, you know, I should have a little bit more of an idea about what is what is coming up next. And I'm super excited. Yet yeah, anxious. I just really, 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 really want to start a family and... The fact that I have to do it now or never, it's not ideal, but that's something I'm willing to do. Um, hopefully, my my hope is that, you know, they have a look, they, they're able to do some sort of test, I don't know, to see how many eggs or roughly how long I've got. If so, they'll be able to like preserve my eggs, keep them frozen or whatever they do with them until I'm ready. Um, whether that be now or whether that be in a few years' time. Because um, I know that I've been trying naturally anyway. I, me and my partner would be more than happy to have a child now. But just because of everything that's going on at the minute, would it be right? Yes, I feel like it would. But I don't want to feel like I'm doing it because I have to do it, if that makes sense. like I don't want to feel like I'm only having a baby now because I've been told I have to have a baby now. Um... I mean, hell, I'd love to have a baby now. I would fucking love to have a baby now, to be honest. But God has other plans, clearly. So I'm just going to have a little bit of faith and just hope that, you know, there's there's options out there that I can, me and my partner can go for. I don't really know what else to say. Other than if you are on the contraceptive pill, microguidon to be specific check go for a checkup at the doctors and ask them about it because i didn't i had no idea nobody ever told me about it and a part of me feels not betrayed but i'm kind of peed off the fact that you know they, they, they run through with you like a few like side effects or you know what could happen but there's actually a ridiculous amount of things that it can do to your body and not know about. Um, so I would go and get checked out and ask about it. And this video is probably a complete shambles, but I'm gonna post it up anyway, because I want people to hear what I have to say. And I want people to be able to join me on my journey and be able to relate. Even if, you know, you're not going through the same thing you can you can relate if if you're a mother if you've you know if you've ever struggled to have children or you know you were trying to conceive for so long let me know like in the comments or anything like that just i want to hear like good successful stories i want to hear positive things i want i want positivity i don't want any negative comments in the comment box like oh um this 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 is the biggest load of crap ever i don't know what people would say but there's always some people who have something bad to say so i don't think this was too bad considering i'm a complete shambles to be honest with you i just keep seeing all over social media at the minute like all these people like coming out oh i'm pregnant you know baby number two um can't wait to meet you you know and i'm just i'm so happy you know, I am happy for the people, you know, because the majority I do know and I'm I'm friends with them and, you know, and a lot of my friends have, I must say a lot of my friends, a few of my friends have children and it's all I've ever wanted, but it just sucks how it's so difficult for some people just to do the, the one thing that women were put on earth to do, so to speak. I might offend a few people, but you know, you know what I mean. So, yeah. Fingers crossed that on Monday everything goes well. 
and I can come back with another TTC um, video about the plants moving forward. I'm going to make a separate playlist on YouTube because um, obviously not everyone wants to watch this sort of video. They're more interested in, you know, what I'm painting on my face today or like makeup products or something like that. So I will make a separate, excuse me, I'll make a separate playlist on YouTube where all of my trying to conceive and fertility videos will be put on. Um, thank you guys for watching so, so much. I'm proud that I didn't actually cry in this video, even though I nearly did. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. My nose is running because I'm trying not to cry. Um, I'll be back soon with an update video and I love you all. Pray for me. See you in the next video, guys. Bye.